One of the things I learned a long time ago <laughs> was that you might plan out and have a good idea what you think you're going to do. You may even have some plans about what you want to do. But you know, <laughs> it doesn't mean that's what you're going to do. <laughs> oh boy, I'll tell you. There are times when I just laugh because it's like, well, you know that I know I started in one direction and I had it all laid out in my mind exactly what my plans for the day were and how accordingly that it was going just right, it seemed like, until I got to the point of trying to cross over from a podcast to a PC and use that type of venue in order to promote something that you know was going on that I wanted to share with other people. Uh-uh, ain't working that way. <laughs> One of the things you realize very quickly in code, as well as in dealing with network engineering or dealing with you know, the cross-platform types of formats that go on within the uh, digital information age is that there aren't just glitches, there are conflicts. There are things that you have to work around or work with and then kind of coordinate according to, you know, either your budget, you know, which in my case is I don't own a Mac, you know, and that it's easier to use things sometimes with the latest, greatest, you know, most expensive thing you could find. And that coordinating sometimes sites and websites, people don't always think of, you know, back, uh, what we used to call, um, backwards compatibility, meaning that it's compatible to people that can't afford, you know, the latest, greatest, you know, newest, wonderful thing that's out there, you know, or that they don't have it on their phone, you know, because they're too busy ministering to people that have it on their phone. I got rid of my phone. <laughs> I'm one of those guys that went, hey, you know what? I don't see the need right now for, you know, a computer on a phone, so I'm getting rid of my phone, so I don't have one. You know, my wife has a phone, we have one phone, that's it. You know, we can take messages off of that, and that's fine. Oh, sure, we, we're, we're probably, you know, state-of-the-art in some ways, you know, digital information age type people, you know, in the sense of, oh, yeah, you know, Vidivo and all the different ministries that, you know, operate from that. But the reality of what God did wasn't through the venue of, you know, man inventing inventions that we have to use in order to share the gospel. The fact is, one person changed the world completely, forever, and that was Jesus. And he did it through the venue of 12 people. And those 12 people, even the one that fell away, you know, or that you know, uh, betrayed Jesus, also in lots of ways was used anyways to bring about the gospel. And then his replacement, Paul, <laughs> although the church tried to put someone else in that capacity, but basically Paul, we know, is probably the one God intended to replace Judas. But in reaching out to the world, God sent people out, not computers out. He didn't use the digital age or use technology. And a lot of times we get carried away with what we think we have to do or buy or think or feel or experience in some way using the latest, greatest, you know, venue or technique that we think we have to have. God doesn't need that. And as a matter of fact, the gospel is going to be preached by angels flying through the heavens. You can't get any more real than that. Oh, sure, you may want to take out your phone, you know, and photograph that, you know, and watch it. But I think I'd rather, you know, like, experience it than watch it. And that's sometimes what you need to realize, what you're missing out when you sometimes go about just doing a digital church. If you're someone who doesn't get involved in the experience of being live there and you're trying to make some experience of live at home through a digital format, you're not cutting it. I'm telling you straight up, God will bless you. God will use that. God will teach you. God will inspire you even. But there's more to reality than going through second best. You see, being personal is being personal. You don't want to hear it second hand and you don't want to see it second best. You want to see it live. You want to see the reality of God in your life. You want to know personally and feel intimately that 
nature of God that Jesus is personified in by him coming to you and intervening in your life. You don't want him to be like a avatar of Jesus. You don't want it to be like a second best or a let me look through this glass darkly to see you know kind of what Jesus was like. No, you want to hear from Jesus himself. And that's why you should take the time, make the time, in some way go out of your mind in a way to get to the place where you can experience God in a personal intimate way and that sometimes means going to church, folks. You know, if you can't go, then yeah, I'd say of course use a venue that, like the internet or technology in some capacity, you know, to participate. But until you've been there live, it just isn't the same. And I'm being straight up with you because I'm the first one to tell you, no, you don't have to go to church. You can be ministered to by God direct, even as God has spoken to individual people directly in solo capacity. You know, they weren't part of, you know, some major congregation someplace. But you should in the fellowship of the saints gathering together at least once you know which is kind of sad to say because you should go regularly but because you're they're missing out on what you can do to minister to them as opposed to you thinking you're getting ministered to but you should be a part of some type of local environment that you have with your own fellowship of people whether it be your daughter or yourself or your husband or your wife or your children sitting down around maybe together, the three of you, four of you, five of you, however many there may be, or your neighbors or friends or whatever, you know, the group of you getting together so that you could watch, if you were, on a digital format, a podcast or a video or a video, you know, or a teaching or a audio or some type of venue that God is speaking to you, but then still have that interaction with someone that you could talk to and relate to in a personal way. I admit, I'm, a, I'm a pretty much a, a solo person. I'm more independently solo than probably anyone you know. And you know, if you don't believe me, come over and we'll talk. <laughs> I believe, believe me, in that like, you know, hey God, you and me, man, let's Enoch and get out of here. But I, I, I'll tell you straight up, God has never allowed anyone that rebellious spirit or that independent spirit, either one, to be manifest in such a way that you never spend time in the fellowship of other people, in communion with other saints, in the integrity of being knit together with other individuals who share like-minded faith of what you're going through or you're experiencing in life in some way. God never intended you to be sold. No, that's a false teaching. God intended for you to be part of the body of believers that he calls the bride, that you are a member of the body of Christ and you are meant to be knit together so that the church would come to you and you would come to the church. Together you would be fellowshipping one with another. Now I'll admit, you know, sometimes the church misses out, you know, it doesn't always come to you like it should, you know, in a local community church, you know, should. You should have people that miss you when you're not at church, you know, or don't know where you're at and they come and visit you and see what's going on with your life but that involves you also being the same way of like mind to other people in the same capacity you would notice who wasn't there and you would feel the lack and pray and then you would go as the Lord led you to go and see how that person was doing because that's really what it boils down to what a church is it's a community it's people gathered together to become closer to each other and closer to the Lord. That's why we call the church community in Judaism. I mean, Jewish thought isn't always wrong. So don't think that it is because, hey, you know, quite frankly, there's a lot of things that are in Judaism that are pretty good. But it doesn't mean that it's right either. But there are perspectives that we can learn from both, from Judaism and Christianity, from religious observances, as well as apply it to our life in an individual way. And that means Community means commune in unity together. Commune means to eat. If you were hungry, how would I know? I would know because I am intimately related to you and I would be fellowshipping with you and see that you got no food in your table. So I would bring food and we would commune together. And that's really what the church is all about. Because pure religion is this and undefiled before the Lord, we're told. That we would take care of widows and orphans. 
So you see, there is a purpose for community and communing. It's more than just having bread and wine and celebrating the Jesus you know, return until he comes again in glory, doing that in remembrance of him. But it's also about knowing our own individual needs and being able to minister one to another, to care for one another, to bind our hearts together in love so that we would become unified. We would become a unity in helping each other. You who have you know, much might be able to give to him who has less. And him who has less might have much more time to spend to do those things that you who have more might not be able to do. So there's a community of working together for a common good. And then the goal being obviously demonstrating the love of God in our lives for each other. In that what Jesus said, by this shall they know you are my disciples indeed. In that you have love for one another. How can you demonstrate love only long distance through the digital format? unless you're actually in person by being intimate and real with one other person. So you see, you need to find someone, somewhere, to spend some time together so that you and God and that other person can share in the love that God has made manifest in you by dying for you, by giving his life for you, and then by asking you to do the same. Would you not, even in your own need, reach out to someone else and help them if they ask you to? Then likewise so too, let us this day consider better what our independent spirit in America is and how we need to really humble ourselves and get real one to another and help each other through these evil times that we're going through because the times they are changing and it's getting worse out there. So it's not just a matter of, you know, pop on or pop in another video or video or audio or some podcast, or recast, or television cast, but rather to be able to be one of those of the cast that's part of the play that God has performed for generations in the universe to see and to reveal in His nature and His oneness and His unity in what He calls the church, not the true church, the church, which you are and I am. And throughout eternity, not even hell itself will prevail against it. Because we are the body of Christ. We shall sing a song together. We shall all bend a knee and declare to the glory of God the Father that Jesus Christ is Lord. And that, my friend, is why we love one another as He has told us to. So, demonstrate it. Practice it. Use it. Find a way to not abuse it by being able to, through grace, go your own way but rather take today the chance to reach out in some way to one other person and let them know. Let them know somehow, some way that you're thinking about them and that you care. That's all God is really asking you to do. That's all God ever wanted from you. That's all He's trying to do with you today to let you know He cares. <laughs>